Well, hello, and welcome to logic, symbolic logic more specifically, um, being offered completely online here. Uh, and so your lectures throughout uh, this quarter uh, will be provided uh, or delivered via these kinds of videos, as you already know. Um, here you're getting to see sort of the real thing, what these lectures will look like and sound like. Uh, and probably the first thing that you're noticing is that uh, I appear to be some sort of ghost. Uh, I assure you, I am not at this moment uh, dead, so I'm not a ghost. Uh, but the way the video system works, it makes me look sort of <laughs> partially transparent. Um, nonetheless, you know, I think eventually uh, we'll, we'll all get used to it. What I want to talk to you today about is section 1.1. Um, the very beginning of this course. And here is where we're going to learn, as you can see here from the title of uh, this uh, section, we're going to learn about what logic is all about. So, what I often do to begin this section is um, I invite my students to sort of play a word association game, if you like. Um, by the way, I'll just mention here at the outset, uh, it seems to me that I'm getting a little bit blurry as well. Um, I think unlikely that in reality I'm actually getting blurry. I think it's another sort of aspect of our camera setup um, such that it sometimes goes in and out of focus. So uh, just be prepared for that, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Nonetheless, uh, back to our slide here. Um, what do you think of when you hear the word logic is a question that I always like to begin this course with uh, because I like to get an idea as to what people think of when they hear that word. Um, where they might have heard it in sort of more real-world contexts. Um, people often mention things like, uh, or concepts like uh, reasonableness, common sense, um, these kinds of things. Um, often, I will have to be the one that throws in the reference to Spock from Star Trek, who's supposed to be logical. At any rate, that, that uh, association sometimes you know, falls flat, but anyway, I'll offer it here once again. Um, Nonetheless, having said all of that, reasonableness, common sense, these are good ideas when it comes to what logic is at least supposed to be all about. Um, more specifically, though, and you can see this here uh, on the bullet point, um, is that logic is the science of evaluating arguments. And of course, this is the definition that the author of the text, Patrick Hurley, provides for us. Logic is the science of evaluating arguments. And so to better understand what's going on here, um, what I'll be doing then is breaking that definition down here in the coming slides in this section 1.1. So obviously a key word here when it comes to this definition of logic is the word argument. And again, I would ask students, well, what, what comes to mind when you think of an argument? And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we might think of people sort of yelling at one another or particularly emotionally charged uh, circumstances or contexts when you hear the word argument. Um, but in the end, I think we usually get to the idea um, that an argument is simply um, an expression where you have one person disagreeing with another or one group disagreeing with another and offering some kinds of reasons to believe a particular conclusion uh, and the other group might disagree with that conclusion or offer their own reasons uh, in opposition to that. Uh, more specifically, again, in this class, an argument will be seen as a set, which is a group of state statements, one of which is supposed to be supported by the others. Right? So an argument is a, a group of statements, one of which is supposed to be supported by the others. There's supposed to be evidence uh, delivered for one of those statements. Another way to think of this, though, is to understand that arguments are often used when some person or some group of people is attempting to convince you to believe something. Right? And so get, this is a broader definition um, that I think really shows us just how much we engage with arguments uh, in our everyday life. And in fact, at this point in my class, when I'm doing a face-to-face -face version of the class or a hybrid version of it, um, I would ask students, you know, where do you encounter arguments in your life? And you know, the list can go on and on here, uh, from work scenarios to family to politics. Um, often, I will supply sort of almost the most immediate uh, example of an argument or where you might encounter arguments. And that would be, of course, in a college setting. Um, it's not as if your instructors simply say, OK, here, here are the list of facts that you need to believe. Why? You know, Because I say so. Click. Here's another list of facts you need to believe. Uh, that's not how college works. 
There are claims offered, of course, by instructors, and then they will offer evidence to support those claims. And so what we're talking about here, of course, again, um, is an argument then, because you have a set of claims or statements, one of which is supposed to be supported by the others. But given this very broad understanding of arguments, which we encounter all the time in our lives, um, I think it's clear then that this could be a helpful course, because this course is designed to help you identify which arguments you should accept and which ones you should reject. So as we know, in the real world, so to speak, uh, when people offer arguments, they're offering arg an argument in opposition to somebody else's argument, right? And so they have these arguments that offer uh, conflicting or contradicting conclusions. How do you make sense of that? Which argument, or at least the conclusion of that argument, ought you to accept? Making sense of that is what this class is all about. Now, having said that, uh, this is sort of the, it comes very early in the class, but it's sort of the high watermark at which I'm trying to sell the class to you because it does sound like at this point, great. Symbolic logic is going to enable me to make sense of the world and all of these arguments that are coming at me all the time. Having said that, um, and as you already may know, the class will quickly progress uh, from dealing with short written passages, um, as you'll see here, especially in chapter one, and also to a lesser extent in chapter three, to replacing those short written passages with symbols, with letters and other strange markings um, that will represent the material uh, that uh, is found in an argument. So being more honest about it that way, um, as I've already warned you, I think, in our first meeting, um, the class will very quickly move to looking more and more like a math class. And of course, this is why uh, many of you are taking symbolic logic uh, in order to meet the quantitative skills requirement, right? Um, it, in other words, you'll be using the same part of your brain that you would if you were to be taking, say, an algebra class of some kind or some kind of math class. Nonetheless, if you find yourself um, interested in fields of law, computer programming, detective work, um, logic puzzles, perhaps, I mean, that's not very you know, uh, lucrative, we could say, but doing logic puzzles, um, any of these fields, definitely this class will pertain to that um, fairly directly. Many people are not interested in any of these fields. Uh, at the same time, I think almost everybody who's in uh, getting an undergraduate education at some point will encounter some kind of standardized test, as you see here at the bottom of this slide, right? That whether it's the SAT, uh, the GRE, the MCAT, which is a medical test, these are all standardized tests. Uh, where you're selecting uh, the correct answer from a, among a list of possibilities. And it has been shown that those who do well in symbolic logic tend to do better uh, on these kinds of tests. And so if you get nothing else out of this class, um, I would hope that you would find that your skills in these kinds of testing environments uh, would be improved. So obviously a, a key element here of this definition of what an argument is um, would relate to what a statement is, right? And so we need to think about what a statement is. So a statement is a claim that is either true or false, okay? So it's, it's fairly straightforward, right? Um, I can ask, as I do in class, can anybody give me an example of a statement? And there are just millions and billions of, of these, of course. Uh, today is Tuesday would be an example of a statement. Uh, the sky is purple it would be an example of a statement, right? Statements can be true or false, just remember that. What's more challenging is to think about those types of sentences which are not statements, right? Um, there are some of these, and so in fact, the one I've just offered you here is a type uh, of sentence that is not a statement, right? It's a question. Questions aren't true or false, for example. Um, other examples would include commands, right? A parent might say to a child, go to bed, right? Um, well, the child doesn't respond, that's false, uh, at least the parent hopes that the child doesn't say this. Uh, so it's not true or false, go to bed. It's a command. <clears throat> Exclamations are not statements, right? Um, if you turn off all the lights wherever you might live at, 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 at night so that the place where you live is completely pitch dark and then you start walking rapidly around, uh, eventually you'll bang into something, right? And then whatever word or words might come forth from your mouth um, would no no doubt be some kind of exclamation. Uh, that kind of statement is not true or false, again. That kind of sentence, I should say. 
Proposals are, are another kind of sentence that is not a, a statement. A proposal, hey, let's go to the mall, right? It's not true or false. It's just a suggestion or a proposal, um, right? And suggestions as well fit in here. Whether something's a suggestion or a proposal, doesn't really matter. But the key here is that none of these kinds of sentences that you see on this list, uh, none of these are statements. So when we're going to be looking here very shortly uh, at short passages with multiple sentences in them, um, if any of those sentences fall into one of these kinds here that we've just looked at, um, they would not be part of an argument. It might be that there's an argument going on in that overall paragraph, but if you see any of these kinds of sentences, they would not be part of that um, argument. They'd be doing something else.